<laughs> yeah. well, so, so what, are you, what are you researching? What are you, what are you coming across? What are you learning? Again, so many layers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my dissertation is on, simply put, post-World War II disability rights. I'm building off of similar like, methods that have been used to identify long social movements in regards to like the civil rights movement. And I'm just using that same framework for disability rights and trying to piece together. Most people argue that disability rights really shows up um, early 70s and then lasts until the passage of the ADA in 90, 1990. I'm saying that in order to like, fully understand this movement, we can trace it back to the post-war era. You can realistically trace back like, even further if you want, but I think that culturally, right after World War II, we have this influx of returning wounded veterans, and we have new dialogues showing up about disability and like accessibility. So I'm saying that through sports, culture, like left of center presses, and then early activist movements, we can better understand the long disability rights movement and create a more comprehensive understanding of this like post-war era, if that makes sense. It's a lot. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So why? So uh, I'm curious. You say post World War II and these soldiers coming mm -hmm. back that are wounded. Was this just not thought about before World War II that like oh people served our country and like put their lives on line and there's they come back was there anything done for them or was yeah so there there has been in the past um, there's a lot of work done on like veterans after World War One coming home and. They're, it's almost always tied to labor, right? So it's these veterans come home and it's, oh, you served, okay, great. Um, can you still work? If you can still work, okay. great. And if you can't work, now there's these questions of like welfare in the state. And then that's when it starts to get like complicated. And um, that's why I think post-World War II, we see in, an increase in like this welfare state and the government actually <laughs> providing sort of like resources for people, yeah. whereas, Following World War One, from everything that I've researched and worked with, it's almost always just tied to our, how can we like reinsert you back into the labor force to have some productivity out of you. Yeah. Um, so if you've lost your arm, can you still work on an assembly line in a Ford factory? Yeah, that's important. So, but then you also see the like society and technology going back from World War One to World War Two is much different. Much different. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, the. So I, I say this post-war world. Veterans are a huge part of that. That's not like the only avenue in. I think that it's super important too to look at the way that our, our country has understood like blind and deaf communities, cognitive disability, um, physical disability, and then also like how the state interprets these wounded veterans. Yeah. And so it's all of these different like paths and, and these groups all like think about disability and ability in like different ways. So it's like a complicated approach to a topic that everyone has their own interpretation of and their own view of. And then I'm trying to consolidate it down <laughs> into like a story that makes sense and is clear. Um, a lot of people are gonna disagree with things that I say and approaches that I take. I'm trying to include all like the umbrella of really the way that the state interacts with these like grassroots movements, and then how American culture and identity shapes this larger movement, if that makes sense. I'm excited to read it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for it to be done. So, <laughs> so when does it come out? Um, uh, good question. Um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, for like a year and a half, two years is my goal. Okay. Because I still have to do... Like I said, a lot of this re research got postponed. I was able to do some of that um, like source exchange stuff with some people, but there's just too many collections. It's impossible to do that everywhere. Um, so I'm hoping to have all of the research totally done within a full calendar year from today kind of idea. Like that's my hope. And then I have a decent amount written 
already from what I could write without the sources, um, a lot of the background, more of the background stuff. Once I interpret the sources, go through it, see if it's matching up with what my current like thesis and idea is of this. If it cl clicks together, then I'll put it in, it'll rock, rock it out, and then write it, and we should be looking at like a year and a half, two years, the hope. <laughs>